If it's not clicking, the once you bring up the video, oh, it's gonna click. I'm gonna be like, oh shit. Hello everyone, my name is Sandra and thank you so much for tuning in. All right, y'all, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go back to my roots and do a reaction video. While I'm doing the reaction video, I'm gonna get ready. Okay, get ready for the day. What we're doing today, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what I'm getting ready for. I'm just getting ready. We also are going to try some makeup that I've received that I have yet to try before. Today, we are going to be reacting to this viral video that I just saw and essentially you have had a son confronting his mother about being a manipulator. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. What's up, TikTok? Hey, it's Tammy. Chaos coordinator. I'm here with my mom. And we're here to talk about some things. So I wanted to tell you, I really do think, you know, if I'm honest, that you're a very manipulative person. And I think that you use a lot of things in our relationship with our family and also in your regular life with people as manipulation tactics so you can garner sympathy and keep doing things that you do that you probably know in your heart of hearts are the wrong thing for you to do. I did see some people online say, well, why is he, you know, bringing this up on a public platform? Why is he calling his mom out? Why does he feel the need to put this on the internet? What it seems to me is that they have a podcast together or, you know, they do videos together or they have some kind of platform where they talk about different things on a public platform already. So they already have like a public presence that this isn't something that is new where they discuss things publicly. Knowing that, I personally don't have that same sentiment where it's like, well, why are you discussing this in a public platform? Because clearly they already discuss things publicly. It'd be different if the mom was living a private life and the son himself just had like a YouTube channel or was on TikTok and just blindsided his parent by just randomly recording them and they don't know and, and then the child is just wanting to bust them out in public, then I would have a little bit of a different feeling about it. Clearly, they have a public thing together where they talk. Maybe she was a little bit blindsided by the topic. The whole concept of them talking is part of their platform. It's part of what they do. So I'm not going to fault him for bringing up a conversation, which a conversation that I actually think is very important, a good conversation for the public to engage in. I think the way he went about doing it as well was very respectful. Like he didn't call her out of her name. He wasn't cursing. He wasn't aggressive. He didn't have aggressive energy when he was approaching this conversation. He simply said, look, mom, this is the behavior that I've been noticing. And it seems like this behavior occurs when X, Y, Z happens. The look on her face, you could tell like she was like, she was very upset that he brought this up, but he brought it up in a way that is effective communication. It'd be different if he was just like, well, you da 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 and you did, da. you know, he wasn't wilding out on his mama. He was just like, hey, this is something that I've noticed and I want us to address this. Give me an example, please. Uh, one easy example is every time we start talking about something related to me, maybe like coming out or whatever the case may be, you instantly start going to, oh, well, I felt really bad too. And I think you do that as a way to manipulate things. I'll even say for this channel, sometimes when you don't want to talk about certain content matter, you say, well, I'm just going to leave the channel. It's like a manipulation tactic. And um, I will also say, I think sometimes when you like around family and things like that, you know, the first thing is like, oh, I've been sick. or oh. And even if you've been feeling better, you're just like always, I think, seeking sympathy as like a way to manipulate situations and get what you want out of them. I think it's fair that the mom asked for examples. If you're unsure of what the other person is meaning when they're saying, hey, you're doing this thing, it is completely reasonable to be like, hey, give me an example of what you're talking about. He not only gave example, he gave several. He gave her the example of coming out. I'm not a part of the LGBTQ community, okay? So I cannot say that I understand what it feels 
feels like to come out. But I can imagine that if you're going through something that is emotionally taxing and the other person makes it about how they feel rather than helping you where you are, I can understand that that would be very frustrating, very frustrating to deal with and make building and maintaining a relationship extremely difficult. The part about this video that really hits home for me is that not only have I experienced that in my family, but also multiple times Justin has brought it to my attention that I do this as well. I do that to him. We'll be having a conversation about something that he's going through, something that he's feeling or something that I've done that was harmful to our relationship, harmful to him, and I end up making it about myself and how I feel. I don't think everyone that does that is necessarily doing it for nefarious reasons. I do believe that it is a defense mechanism because it's very difficult to rationalize the idea that you're the villain in a situation. It's very difficult to come to terms with the fact that in certain situations, you're the problem. Rather than dealing with that reality, we try to push it over to something else, deflect to something else. And sometimes it's deflecting to a feeling or how the situation is making you feel, even though it's not about how you feel, it's about what happened to the other person and how you've contributed to it. I honestly believe it's a defense mechanism for some people. Now, there are some people that are possibly very much so aware that they are doing these things. This is by Moted, it's a blush. I do believe that there are some people that are extremely aware of what they're doing when they do it. I don't think everyone is so. I definitely was not aware that I was doing this to Justin. Even when he would bring it up to me, I'm just like, I'm not trying to make it about myself. I'm not trying to deflect from this, that, and the third. I'm not trying to do that. I wouldn't be trying to do that, but it is still what's happening. And whether or not your intention is for that to happen is irrelevant. It's just crazy. Watching this video, it felt like looking at a, at a mirror. I finally understand and see what it is that Justin's been talking about because it's difficult to see it with myself. I try to be self-aware, but I'm not always the most self-aware. And I can admit that. I can definitely admit that. Watching this video has made me very aware while the way I present myself isn't as extreme as how the mother is in this video, it's still a problem. It's still something that I myself need to work on within myself so that I am not deflecting from a conversation because it's difficult for me emotionally or deflecting from a conversation because I don't want to be the villain. Instead of doing those things, just being there for whoever I'm having a conversation with, whether it's Justin or somebody else or when Bella gets older, I definitely do not want Bella coming up to me and saying, mom, I think you're a manipulator. The best way to avoid that is to really deal with it right now, to learn how to be more self-aware and to recognize when I am doing a defense mechanism and then the stop it. Overall, I think like the examples that he gave were very clear. They were very concise. And like I said, he didn't have any negative malicious energy when he was giving those examples that his mother requested. So he talks about when he came out, she made it about herself rather than dealing with however she may have contributed to his turmoil of coming out. I also want to note her reaction to him saying like, hey, this is the behavior I've observed. She's like rolling her eyes. She's just like doing all this next stuff. She's not creating an environment where a conversation an honest and open conversation can happen. Just noticing that detail, I'm leaning towards believing that what he's saying is correct. And then the next example that he gave was when they have difficult conversations on their YouTube channel or their podcast or whatever it is to just say, oh, I'm just going to leave. That is a manipulation tactic because it's like you're giving a an ultimatum to a project that y'all have already established, right? Like we've established this channel together. This is something that we do. We probably make money from it. And you're threatening to leave it just so that I will just, you know, not talk about what it is I want to talk about. It's like rather than dealing with the conversation itself, it's like it's either me or this conversation. It's either me or this. It's either me or that. And then that way, you know, you can kind of force people to just drop whatever issues they're having or whatever conversation they want to have so that they can keep you there. That is a manipulation tactic and, and it's very unhealthy and as a very unhealthy way to try to keep someone in your life or to try to control them. That is very controlling. We have this thing together. Like, why are you threatening to leave it just because I want to talk about this difficult conversation? Like, can we just discuss it or this, that, and the third? Why does it always have to go to, well, I'm just going to leave the channel. Well, I'm just going to do this. It doesn't have to go to that extreme, but because the other person
person is pushing it to that extreme, it is a manipulation tactic. The other thing about sickness and things like that, I've been around people that are like that, okay? And it is, it is just, it's, it's draining. They're very emotionally draining because it's just like, the moment I see you, it's just like, you want me to just have this pity party for you. And I think some people do that so that you will never confront them about anything that they're doing because you see them as being so weak and frail. Why would you confront somebody that's just, they're so sick all the time, whole time. They've, they've been feeling better. You know, this is the better days are coming and they're still like, oh, I'm still feeling so sick. Just so that any difficult conversations you might want to have with them, you'll think twice about doing it because, oh no, they're, they're probably sick. Let me, I don't want to add anything to their plate. I, I just, I'll just keep kind of keep it to myself. That is a form of manipulation. Being around people that are like, that is emotionally draining. I have worked with people that were like that. Every single time they would do something annoying or every single time you talk to them, it's all these problems that they're going through. While you want to be there for somebody, at the same time, it's just like, we all have our stuff. We all have our things that we deal with, but that does not mean we can't be held accountable for what we're doing. It doesn't mean that we can't be held accountable for the problems that we are causing or contributing to. It is a form of manipulation. You're, you're putting out this sob story for people to feel sorry for you so that they never confront you about anything that you're doing, even if what you're doing, you know it's not something you're supposed to do. I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. See, you want- well, I gave you examples, so No, you okay, respond? so let me, yeah, I'm responding. And I said, I think you're wrong. Okay. And why I think you're wrong is because you're the manipulator. It's not me. See, her reaction lets me know that what he's saying is most likely true. Rather than dealing with what he said, rather than acknowledging the examples that he gave her that she asked for, she flipped the script and was like, no, you're the manipulator. It's not me, it's you. That is extremely toxic. Having conversations like that are extremely frustrating. You, you try to talk to somebody about a behavior that you're noticing and rather than than them dealing with what you're saying. They're just like, well, it's not, it's not me, it's you. You're the manipulator. You're the person with the issue. It would be beneficial to his mom to actually listen to her son for a second, hear him out and try to understand. I don't think she's trying to understand him in this moment. I think she is just trying to make sure she keeps up appearance without actually putting in the work to make their relationship healthy. He gave her clear examples of when she's been being manipulative, rather than addressing those examples that he stated that she asked for, she went to, no, it's not me, it's you. It just, it, she's proving his point during this conversation, which is sad. It's not me. You are you the You see how you're like turning the tables literally right this second and not addressing no, the no, actual- No, 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 let's address your manipulation. Let, let's address it. But well, we can, I'm fine to do that, but it's funny that like when I'm here talking to you about something with you, the first thing you do is come to me. And I think that's exactly the way you use those tactics. I think he's doing a very good job of keeping his emotions in check while dealing with a very difficult situation because anyone that's talked to somebody that they don't want to hear anything that you have to say, they're just like completely dismissing everything that you're trying to communicate to them. Anyone who's been in that situation knows how frustrating it is to talk to somebody that is like that. He's trying to have a conversation with her about a behavior that he noticed within her instead of dealing with that. That she wants to make it about him and the problems that he has. But it's like, I started this conversation, right? You didn't start this conversation about behaviors. I started this to address something that you're doing. Can we just deal with this? And then at some later point, we can have a conversation about what you think I'm doing that's manipulative. And it seems like he would have been open to having that conversation if it was actually genuine. By all means, let's have that conversation. But right now we're talking about you. So why is it? that your first intention is to make it about me as opposed to handling the problem that we're talking about right now. Why are we deflecting to what I do when the conversation started about you? It's easy to point the finger. It's very difficult to look in the mirror. Kudos to him for staying so calm because I know for me, it's very difficult. When I know that I'm right about something and I'm trying to have a conversation with someone, it is extremely difficult to stay as calm as a cucumber as he is in this situation it's a tactic that you use it is true it's a tactic really you think yes 
I do. You know what? Let me tell you something. I'm not going to always be here. That's more manipulation. Okay. What now you're talking about your what potential I, fault, you know, unaliving as, as more manipulation instead of confronting the real thing. You just run no, from it. No, the real thing is that you're the manipulator. That is not fair for her to bring up, well, I'm not always going to be here. Well, we never know when any of us are going to die. He could pass away well before she does. So what does that mean at that point? People bringing up, you know, their demise so that you don't confront them about what they're doing. That is very manipulative. And the fact that she's coming up with these back to back to back is pretty telling. That makes it seem like it's a little bit more intentional than what I was thinking originally. I was thinking maybe it was just like a Defense mechanism, not really aware that she's doing it, but the way she's doing it so back to back and aggressively, it does seem purposeful and it does seem intentional. I think that is so unfair. It is so unfair to bring up the fact that you could die as a means to say, well, let's not have this conversation because I'm not going to be here for forever. I'm not going to be here forever. So what does that mean? You could just treat people however the hell you want to because you're eventually going to die one day. Well, guess what? We all are going to die at some point so does that mean we all get to walk around and be rude and mean and nasty to everyone because one day we're going to all pass away obviously no i don't think anyone would agree with that mentality what does you eventually passing away have to do with this conversation that we're having right here i shouldn't correct you when you're wrong because you're gonna die one day that is not how you grow that is not how you learn that is not how you maintain a relationship you okay. are you're spoiled rotten and you are the manipulator you are spoiled rotten i think you literally just proved exactly what i said no 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 i did not so we can end the video now because i think you literally proved exactly what i said you don't ever you never want to take accountability what you want me to take accountability for something you think i am and you always seek no, to build no 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 i'm not i'm not gonna take accountability for something you i think, think that's why I you am. can't even go to therapy by yourself that's why you dropped, I, out of, no. you dropped out of your last therapist because I think when people start telling you what? about yourself, no, you don't no, no, like let it. Let me tell you something. She's an art therapist. I didn't even know she was an art therapist. She can't therapy me. She can't. I'll stop I, you. I don't think anybody no, can therapy no, 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 no. I don't think it was right of him to be like, well, I don't think anyone could therapy you. Like, she's just so far gone that just give up on this woman. I don't think that's a fair thing to say to anybody because you, you never know. Anything can happen and then people really have an awakening and they decide to do better with their life. They decide to treat people better. Honestly, I don't think that that was a fair thing for him to say, but I also think that his mom calling him spoiled because he's trying to to address a negative behavior that she's exhibited isn't fair either. I think a lot of parents think that because I clothed you, because I took care of you, you should never, ever confront me about anything. You should never, ever tell me that I did something wrong. My main issue with that whole argument is none of us knocked on our mother's uterus and was like, hey, can I move in? None of us. We're all here because of a decision that our parents made. It it is nothing to do with something that we did. It's nothing to do with something we asked for. If you burden me with liveliness, okay, if you burden me with the prospect of being alive, then it is your responsibility to do those things. So how are you going to throw in my face things that you've done for me because I was a decision that you made? I really don't like that conversation about, oh, well, you're just spoiled. Just saying, oh, you're just spoiled every time your child brings up a behavior behavior that you're doing that they don't particularly like. It logically just does not make sense. You're supposed to care for me because I am your child. I didn't ask to be here. You brought me here. So yes, you are burdened with taking care of me. When, when you're in a situation like that, it makes you feel unheard. It makes you feel like the other person just is not hearing what you're saying. It's going in one ear and out the other and you're just talking to yourself. I watch this video and it's like, I've experienced that and I want to make sure that I'm not doing that to Bella. When she gets older, 
and we start having conversations. I want to make sure that I'm not doing that to Justin. Honestly, watching this video is really putting a mirror to me because look, me and Justin, we have a beautiful relationship, but our relationship is not perfect. We go through things just like every other couple does. One thing that Justin has always brought to my attention is that sometimes he feels like he's not heard. He feels like instead of dealing with things that are troubling him, I make it about myself and how I feel. And then he has to sit there and comfort me and make sure that I'm okay. It doesn't give him room to express what he's feeling and it doesn't give him room to address me if I'm wrong. You know, it's very difficult to wrap your brain around the fact that you're probably a villain in different situations. It doesn't mean you're a terrible person. It doesn't mean that you're evil, but that in certain situations, you're just wrong. Watching this video and seeing how like his mom is reacting, I had to go up to Justin and I had to ask him, I was like, is this what I do? Is this what you've been trying to explain to me? And he was like, yeah, you, you've done that a few times. And I tried to tell you. Honestly, I felt very embarrassed when he said that. I felt very embarrassed. I felt worried. Like, is this who I'm about to grow up to be like? Am I about to be like the people that treated me this way? Am I about to grow up and be like this woman? And then Bella's going to come up to me and be like, mom, I, uh, you're a manipulator. I don't want to be that way. Wait, I can't talk and do eyeliner at the same time. Let me just hold off on the eyeliner. My whole thing is I want to be more self-aware. I don't want to be so unaware of myself the way this mother is in this video. And in order for me to not be that way, I have to actively focus on self-awareness. If there's a next time that I start acting that way, I was like, just bring up this video. Because if it's not clicking, once you bring up the video, oh, it's going to click. I'm going to be like, oh, shit. No, no, no. She could not provide the therapy I needed because you know why? Every time we got on the phone, she wanted to talk to me about her. She should have been paying me. I think that is so ironic that his mother said that because isn't that exactly what he was complaining about? Isn't that something that he was addressing with his first example about him coming out and his mom making it about her and how she feels? So it's like she understands that that behavior is annoying and that that behavior is not a good way to communicate with somebody if you're trying to be there for them. What am I paying you for? can agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. And then the other therapist we had, the family therapist, I told you what he did. I'm out there in the pool with my sister having a dwank. And and he gonna call me talking about a three-way call. And you and him on the phone. I told don't call no, me this was, time was, of night. It was, our, it was not during the night. It was in the evening. It was 8.30. It was, it it was okay. 8.30. I think this is why it's hard to build and rebuild relationship with you. I beg to disagree. Well, okay. There we go. I think that that whole conversation was very sad to watch. The mom didn't want to hear anything that he had to say. She was not interested in solving any of the problems. She was not interested in hearing him out. She was just more so worried about herself. And it's obviously taking a toll on their relationship. As an older generation, they're really going to have to learn how to communicate better and let go of this mentality that the parent is always right. That's not true. The parent is not always right. I hope that if Bella ever has any issues, that I am able to be there for her and not make her feel like she's alone and not make her feel like she can't come and talk to me about problems that I'm causing for her. I think all of us just need to be a lot more self-aware, okay? Because like I said, I saw myself in this video and it wasn't pretty. I did not like seeing myself in this video. No bueno. I definitely do not want to be like that. This video, I think, is very eye-opening and I hope that more people, after seeing this video, they can be a lot more self-aware and realize when they're harming their loved ones by not being open to criticism. I really do hope that they work through their situation. I really do hope that they get to a place where they can communicate effectively without one person feeling unheard and the other person feeling attacked. And they can actually work through their problems and build a stronger relationship. Some of the comments on this video are really telling. This one person says, that generation of parents are so inept of emotional intelligence and it's disheartening. The gaslighting, manipulation, deflection, and denial is 
ridiculous. And it makes me sad that it's a generational thing that many of us relate to and not a couple of isolated incidents. This one person said, yo, my dad told me once, I sleep good with the decisions I made. However you feel is on you. That is sad. I'm sorry to, to have someone say that, especially a parent say that to you is very sad. This other person says, this is my mom, but instead she says, well, I don't know what to tell you. Do better with your kids since I was such a horrible mother. That is such a gaslight. Like, I recognize that as well, going to that extreme, like, oh, well, you said this about my behavior, so then that means you're saying I'm a terrible person. And I have to realize that that's not what that means. If Justin brings up something that I'm doing that is harmful, that doesn't mean that he's saying I'm a terrible person. In the moment, it feels like that. In the moment, it feels like he's saying, oh, Sandra, you're a piece of mm -hmm. But that's not what he's saying. He's just addressing a particular behavior or an area within myself that I can improve upon. It's a generational thing and it gets passed down. This one person says, it is, but also this is all his content. She is what he says she is, but the fact that they have so much content about this makes me feel like they're both codependent. Mm. This other person says, I'm surprised she didn't say he was being disrespectful because that's usually what comes next. And that is very true. The moment you address anything your parent says that is wrong, oh, you being disrespectful. It's like, no, it's not disrespect. It's an observation. People need to stop trying to make their parents change. By 25, your parents are 45 plus years old. The odds that they're going to change is slim to none. Recognize what they did wrong and don't repeat the mistakes with your children. Trying to reach back and make them reparent you is a waste of time and energy. That I also, I also understand. <laughs> Most likely they're not going to change their mentality. I do think that's a good point to bring up like, hey, look, you can recognize that this is what your parents did. Do better for your kids. I can see how a lot of families have a lot of stress a lot of tension because of this mentality. This one person said, honestly, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because it's super manipulative of him to have this conversation in public for the whole world to see. I don't think he actually wanted her to understand where he was coming from. He just wanted a gotcha moment for the internet. So he needs to work on himself as well. I don't agree with this comment because he gave her examples of when she's behaving this way. And he tried to have an open and honest conversation about it. They have a public platform so you can't tell me, oh, well, he's just, you know, bringing it to the public for clout. It's like, this is what they do. And apparently this is a lot of what their content is, is them having difficult conversations. And I guess her running from them. <laughs> He does want her to understand. That's why he was addressing it so directly. That is why he gave her examples. That is why he was very clear about what was happening and how it was manipulative. And the last comment that I'm gonna read says, my mom's the same way. However, I do believe our kids will feel the same way about us and we may listen and still not agree. What we think is good life advice will turn into manipulation tactics by our kids because we just won't see things the same way based on our experiences. And that's a very interesting, interesting comment that maybe, you know, as things change, our perspective will then be outdated and then our kids are going to come to us with a new perspective and we might not be as open to their perspective the same way our parents are not open to our perspectives. So it's just like a, a cycle that continues to happen because of new information, you know, new lifestyles and the new wave of how people choose to live their lives. But I do think that there's just a universal thing about listening to other people when they have a problem and trying to address the problem for what it is and not deflect. I think that that is a universal truth that will extend past our generation, our parents' generation, our children's generation, and so on and so forth. That video was very triggering for me on multiple levels. It was triggering for me as someone who's experienced someone being manipulative in that way and also also triggering to realize that I partake in behaviors very similar to what the mother was doing. I told Justin, next time you hear me say anything remotely like that, just bring up this video. And I'll be like, that'll be a full stop. That'll put me right in my tracks and be like, hold up, let me reassess and step out of myself and look at the situation objectively. If you like this content, you already know what to do. Like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe so that you can become a Febe. And I will see y'all with the next one. Deuces. Thank you.